Welcome back everyone. Let's finish off this tutorial series by covering the last steps of this project. Particle creation, final rendering, and Photoshop compositing. Before we start, don't forget to please hit that subscribe button and notification bell to get weekly design tutorials. Let's begin. We start by first creating a P-Array particle system. This is what we will use to create the water condensation droplets for the cold brew coffee can. Step 1. Drag a P-Array system. I'm moving the particle container above the coffee can so it's neatly organized. Choose Mesh as your viewport displays since we want an organic and fluid geometry. Next, I'm going to modify the parameters that control the final look of this particle mesh. Step 2. In your particle generation rollout, reset all to zero except particle variation motion to 0.45, particle size to 2, particle size variation to 2.5, and the particle type should be set to metaparticles. Tension should be 0.9. And lastly, we're going to control the total amount of particles on this can. So I'm going to set it to 14,000. With our condensation particle now converted to an edible mesh, I add a Pro Optimizer modifier and set it to 20% to bring down the total polygon count. This does two things. One, it allows for a faster render time since we're using a water shader that is highly reflective. And two, it makes the mesh much easier to manipulate while still giving the perfect silhouette of water condensation. I also add a relax modifier with a 0.35 value to help smoothen out the rough edges of the mesh and finishing it off with a turbo smooth for a clean fluid look. Next, I model the larger water droplets on the can using a modified sphere. I create the sphere, right click convert to an editable poly, and flatten the bottom of the sphere to give it a more realistic shape, similar to morning dew on a blade of grass. In addition, I always use an FFD modifier to help round out the model for quick shape manipulations. You should never use the same standard shapes and geometry when modeling, as it doesn't replicate the randomness and physics of objects in the real world, so it's always a good idea to go the extra mile and create random variations of duplicated assets. With our large water droplet modeled, I use the scatter modifier to quickly disperse the mesh on random polygon faces on the coffee can. This ensures a more realistic placement, which is less time consuming if I had placed it by hand. I also control the overall size of the water droplet and set it to 4.25% of the original size with a duplication value of 3000. Water shader. Let's create our water shader. It's important to always stay organized, so make sure to rename everything. We start with the standard V-Ray material, diffuse set to pure black, so RGB000, reflection set to almost pure white, RGB254, 254, 254, and Fresnel IOR set to 1.4. If you need a refresher on what IOR controls, make sure to check out my previous video where I covered the usage of it. Moving on, I use a refraction set to RGB 250, 250, 250, and a refraction IOR to 1.333. Lastly, I scroll down to the Options tab and enable Reflect on Backside with a cutoff set to 0 0.001. This will create a perfect reflection of the diffuse map as it gets distorted by this water shader. I apply it to my original water particle mesh and my water droplet mesh. Let's do a test render. It's time to create the pool of water that has formed at the base of the coffee can. I want to give the feeling that this coffee is extremely cold, so we will be using a blob mesh to construct a randomly generated organic shape which I will kit bash to form the puddles of water. We start by creating a PF or particle flow source. I choose a base diameter of 10 and press shortcut key 6 to open up the particle view window. I delete the speed and rotation attributes as I will only be working with the birth, shape, and display properties. I choose a sphere 80-sided mesh with a size of 0.56, a scale of 235%, and 100% variation. I then change the birth's emit stop property to 0 and lower the amount from 200 to 50. After that, I create a blob mesh which will shrink wrap and follow the contours of this PF source sphere's geometry. 
Using this method is faster than if I had to model from scratch and allows the software to randomly create geometry with these. Kit bash baby. Next step is to start kit bashing. But first, let me explain what it is. It's a technique where you pick apart certain elements from a set of pre-made objects. In this case, my now flattened blob mesh that has been shrink wrapped to follow the contours of my PF source. I pick the blobs that I like and remodel and reposition them so it looks like puddles of water have formed from the cold surface of the coffee can. I use this technique not only for organic geometry, but also for hard surface models. This is a quick time saving tip for any 3D artist and should be implemented in your modeling pipeline. The final look that I'm going for is for realistic organic randomness. You never want your designs to be too polished, especially if you're creating realistic renders. My pipeline is as follows. I pick a blob that has a silhouette that I like, make a copy of it, and position it where I want it to go. I manipulate it further by using an FFD modifier which I'm using here. FFDs stand for Freeform Deformation or Deformers. I use a set of FFDs ranging from 2 cube to 4 cube, and this tool places a cage over the selected object based on my chosen volume. It allows me to manipulate the surface by pushing and pulling on the FFD vertices, which are then linked onto the base geometry surface. This method allows for quick shape changes and is faster than modeling from scratch. Let's see what the test renders look like now that I've applied my water shader to it. There we go. Using the same exact pipeline, I construct unique water condensation, droplets, and water pools for each of my four coffee flavors. Don't cheat yourself the opportunity by using the same set of water elements. Each one has their own unique water setup to give it a new and random final render. Now we're ready for the last part. Photoshop compositing, or what I like to call faking the shit out of it until the client is happy. I start by duplicating the final render. Never work on originals, always make a copy just in case you f*** it up. I duplicate it one more time and set the blend mode to screen to brighten up my image. Also, name your layers man, one of the worst designer habits is having unnamed layers. Don't be that kind of uncultured swine, hockey puck. You uncultured swine! Next, I'm gonna bring in my render elements. I'm gonna go over render elements in a future video, but right now I just wanna bring in my reflection and raw reflection render elements. I'm gonna use this to get extra shine and to also get a frosted cat effect as well. With the same properties, I'm gonna be using the layer mask. So I'm painting in black to hide the parts that I don't want and painting it white to display those exact layer properties. Right now I'm using the reflection and I'm working with the raw reflection to give me that nice crispy out of the freezer feel to it. Moving on, I go to Google and I'm looking up different lens flares. You want to make sure you have one with a black background. And the reason for that is once you import it inside and change the blend mode to screen, just like that, it automatically hides it. And I'm flipping it around because the light source is coming from the right side. Next, we're gonna add some filter effects. So we're gonna work on the lighting a bit. I added a brightness and contrast and I'm manipulating the values here so I can make the background pop out a little bit more. So I added a levels filter as well. And with the levels filter, you're increasing and decreasing the amount of blacks and white pixels within your image. So it helps uh, when you combo it together with your brightness and contrast. Last step is adding chromatic aberration. I select all the original layers and make two duplicates and call them R and B. Essentially, I only turn on the red and blue channels for these layers. I then move them in opposite directions, one pixel to the left and the other to the right. This gives a lens distortion effect similar to an anaglyph. I turn down the opacity on both and brush out the areas I want the viewer to focus on. In this case, the Palmo coffee logo. To save time, I duplicate the layer mask for both R and B layers. And there you have it. The project and final renders are completed. You learned how to model a realistic object, UV map, texture creation, lighting, 
camera setup, a little particle creation, rendering, and some Photoshop compositing. I hope you learned something rad from this tutorial, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notify bell so you can stay up to date on more design tutorials. Also helps feed my ego. Thanks for watching, and may the universe smile upon you.